Last month, I was in Korea for the 2023 Galaxy Unpacked event for the launch of the Flip 5 and the Fold 5. But at the same time, Samsung also gave us a tour of their facility called the Samsung Digital City. Located in Suwon, South Korea, it's a few hours down south from Seoul, at least by bus. As the name implies, the facility is, well, the size of a city. And just to give you an idea, you even have to take a bus to be able to go around quickly. Not surprisingly, it's also the site of the Samsung headquarters, which is part of our tour. What's up guys, Jose here from Yugatech and join me as we tour the Samsung Digital City and everything it has in store. Our first stop at the Samsung Digital City was the Samsung Innovation Museum. It's also where most of the tour was centered around. The place might be called the Samsung Innovation Museum, but not everything is Samsung. The tour started with the guide showing us the beginning of technology. Yes, the beginning of technology itself from how electricity was discovered to the invention of the telegraph and even the phonograph. So yes, this is real old school stuff. And from there you can see how technology has progressed over the years to become what it is that we use today. And as I mentioned earlier, these aren't just limited to Samsung models. You have the Nokia's, the old school TVs, Sony's and plenty more. And in terms of the telephone or at least the cell phone for this matter, we saw how they went from the really big bricks and that, you know, suitcases high to the very slim smartphones we have in our pockets today. Although seeing some of the phones that I used back in the day in the museum did make me feel quite a bit old, even though I'm just 20, well, try to guess my age. Now, some of the phones I saw include newer Galaxy Samsung models, like from the early 2000s to the mid 2000s, and even some PDAs as popular in the 2000s. Of course, you can't really miss out not seeing a Nokia, even though you probably used one back in the day. And aside from smartphones, what's really cool is seeing how the TVs progress from the black and white boxes that were CRT at the time, to color TVs, then to plasma, which was quite popular back in the day, and now we have the very slim OLED TVs that almost everyone uses. Considering the first ever TV was produced back in the 1920s, it's amazing to see how fast technology has progressed over the years. Aside from seeing the history of technology, we were also given a quick preview of what Samsung has in store for the future. While some of the technology shown in that video is still in development, some of them are already available and being used today. These include the functions already available in current Samsung smartphones and devices, such as the tracking and, as part of the watch, the body mass index, temperature, and many more. Of course, it wouldn't be a proper museum if we didn't see some of Samsung's old devices. Like, what they started off with, that's what I mean. If you didn't know, Samsung started off with electronics and appliances such as air conditioners, refrigerators, TVs, and the like. Later on, they moved to telephones, fax machines, before expanding further to computers, smartphones, semiconductors, and everything we know about Samsung that we love today. We were even shown how the logo of Samsung evolved throughout the years. Did you know that the company's logo color was red before it turned to the blue circle we know today? Yeah, pretty cool, right? Now, moving on from the museum, we were also shown what a Samsung-powered smart home could be like. Yes, not just appliances. This is an entire house powered and controlled by Samsung SmartThings app, which is already available today. So what's interesting is that it's not just limited to Samsung products. The app even works with products from other brands, including these JBL speakers that we saw as part of the demonstration. It's pretty cool since you can use voice command to just adjust the lights, sounds, and even open and close the curtains automatically if you want to watch a movie from the living room. You can even automatically adjust from the TV speakers to your surround sound setup just by saying a command from the app, which is makes life easier. The technology can even help you cook food, provided you have a smart kitchen. It's perfect for those that don't have really good kitchen skills or just don't know how to cook. From adding the right amount of water to knowing how long it should be boiled to whatever dish you want to prepare, the connected home makes life easier. Like, you can just see it on the app, on the screen, and it's there. It tells you everything you need to know. Essentially, Samsung's app connects the entire house allowing you to control it from wherever you are. In the bedroom, it can even do more than just set your alarm. 
if your TV, curtains, or even your bed is Wi-Fi capable, yes, there is a Wi-Fi bed, at least the one we saw at the Samsung's house, because it just automatically raises it in the morning. So imagine all of that, not having to turn on the TV, open the curtains every morning. Since this is a smart house and the smart app, it can do everything for you. As cool as this is though, I think this would be a hard to set up in the Philippines. For starters, the house needs to be connected to the internet, like the entire house. You need to have stable internet at the same time, which we know is yeah. At the same time, the products we saw in the house aren't cheap either. So if you want to make a fully connected house like this one, you will need to cough up a lot of money. At least you can do so if you want and if you have the funds to do it. Now, the last part of the tour is Samsung's C-Lab division. It's essentially where Samsung employees can innovate and create new products that could be sold by the company in the future. If not, these products can even be spawned into new businesses and startups with funding provided by Samsung Research. We were told that there were several brands launched under C-Labs and are already fully working businesses at the moment. So the next time you see a new startup when it comes to robotics, techs, or something similar, it could have started here at the Samsung C-Labs division. So that's about it for our tour of the Samsung Digital City. We saw a lot of cool things from the beginning of technology to the newest product Samsung has in store up to their new entirely connected house. We can't wait for some of these products to arrive since they do have a lot more in development. If you have the chance to visit the Samsung Digital City, I highly recommend you taking the tour. You'll learn a lot about the company's history, how they came to be, and more. There's also the product that they currently have, like the house, which you can do so if your own home. So which part of this tour did you like the best? Also share your thoughts about this kind of video format in the comment section below. It's probably our first time trying it and if you like it, we might do more. Now, if you enjoyed this video, found it entertaining or informative, do give us a like and subscribe to our channel to watch more. Also, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and visit yougetech.com to stay updated with the latest tech news and reviews. Once again, this has been Ose, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.